So hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about what is in my doctor's bag. So as you may know already, I am a GP or general practitioner and this means that I, like most GPs, will have a doctor's bag of my own. So when I was a trainee, so there are three years to the GP training program, SD1, SD2 and SD3. So when I was an ST1, I was allocated to a surgery and the surgery provided me with all the equipment that I would need to essentially perform my job um, and that would be um, in the clinic or uh, doing home visits. So the doctor's bag, from how I understood it, was initially for really for home visits however because the practice I was at was um, a very large practice it meant that I never had my own room my own allocated room so I would have to move around rooms quite often every day um, this there was some equipment in the rooms however it wasn't a full set of equipment it was easier for me just to carry around my doctor's bag kind of wherever I was moved to then as I progressed in my training as an ST3, so in my final year, I was given a particular room, it was my room, which was like amazing. <laughs> so I would obviously have maybe some half days or you know annual leave, etc. So sometimes my room would be used by someone else. And I felt that the equipment, there was some equipment in the room as well, but sometimes that again might go walk about, someone might take it and not necessarily bring it back or just forget to bring it back basically. So Again, I felt it was easy if I just had my own equipment and then I would just take that around with me. And then obviously if I had a home visit, then I would do that. So now I'm going to talk about the contents of my doctor's bag. Of course, everyone's different. Everyone might have different variations um, to what's in their bag. But I'm going to start off with um, what's in mine and the critical things that I feel I need to do. Obviously, my job, especially if I'm going on a home visit. So the first thing you can't do your job without as a doctor, as a GP, is your stethoscope. So I've got a lovely, shiny gold stethoscope. And I remember when I was in the hospital, a lot of people loved to take my stethoscope because it looked so pretty. <laughs> um, so I, when I was a medical student, I had a lovely standard blue stethoscope and I felt that upon graduation, I should step up to a better stethoscope I chose a cardiology uh, stethoscope um, nice gold one um, my mum actually helped me purchase uh, purchase the stethoscope it wasn't a cheap stethoscope um, and I've just I've used it ever since it's still going pretty strong it's got a few kind of scratches now but um, it is still my lovely trusted uh, stethoscope I found actually it's, it's really good for hearing breath sounds <laughs> well, it's a cardiology stethoscope. Um, so that's obviously uh, the one of the most important things you need. So obviously listening to heart sounds, breath sounds. Um, and yes, it's 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 always it's always with me. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is a blood pressure machine. I have a Typical, you know, standard blood pressure machine that I will take uh, with me uh, in my bag. As a medical student, you will learn how to measure blood pressure and you will most likely be given a, um, a manual one. Most GPs will carry a, a, a electronic uh, a blood pressure machine. Of course, sometimes the electronic technology doesn't always work battery might die or it just it's it's just not working for whatever technical reason then you might need to do a manual blood pressure um, so it's important not to lose that skill I'm a bit rusty however if I need to do it I can do it so I also have a thermometer which is very crucial um, there are different types of thermometers you can get thermometers that go into the air I have this thermometer which I don't think many people have. Uh, it it is a non-contact uh, thermometer, which is great, especially with children. Um, you just keep it a few centimeters from the forehead, and it records the temperature. And it's apparently very high precision, intelligent sensor technology. 
activates that. It also helps because actually with the ones you place in the air, you have to put on a little a cap um, and sometimes you have to find it or it drops on the floor. So this one's actually really, really useful and it saved me many times um, with young my young patients who don't necessarily like me putting things in their air. So next is my SATS probe or SPO2 monitor. It's a pretty standard uh, monitor. I keep it very simple and explain to my patients, I just need to measure the oxygen in your blood. That's what this little machine does. It's an, an adult, it's an adult one. It also measures the heart rate. There, you can get a children's SATS probe as well. Uh, I haven't really needed to use one, but actually sometimes it can come in quite handy. So um, some people might invest in a children's SATS probe as well. So I have a very small otoscope and I have an ophthalmoscope. Um, the heads just obviously just come off. Um, very lightweight, very small, great for carrying around. There are, of course, better bigger ones, but these ones do me just fine. So you may or may not know the otoscope is to have a look at uh, inside people's um, ears, to have a look at the eardrum, have a look at the ear canal. Um, and then the ophthalmoscope is to look at the back of the eye. Uh, so next I also have a pen torch, which is great for uh, looking at the pupils, seeing how they react to light, looking at the sizes of the pupils. I also carry a tendon hammer. I prefer the very long ones, although they're not, they don't, they take up a bit of space. You can get smaller ones. I always carry some gloves with me. Again, not everyone uses gloves. I also have some alcohol gel, which is a must especially if you can't always wash your hands straight away. I also carry uh, some wipes, primarily for disinfecting my stethoscope. I use the Clonel wipes, and these ones are from MediSave. I also have a measuring tape, which is great if there are uh, wounds, pressure sores, uh, lesions, and it's good to measure how big they are. Additional things might include, especially if you're going on a home visit, maybe like a urine bottle, if someone's complaining of um, urinary symptoms, so burning or stinging when they pass urine, going to the toilet quite often, you might want to take a urine sample and a dipstick uh, to see if there's any infection or anything in the urine. Um, prescription pad, which is great if you want to leave a prescription with a patient on a visit. Some people might carry emergency drugs in their doctor's bag. So this is a list of some of the medications a GP might take in their doctor's bag. This list is from patient.info. It's not expected for all GPs to carry uh, medications in their doctor's bag. And it depends on where you're based. So for instance, if you're in a rural setting, you might want to carry some emergency medications because it might take the patient a while to get to medical assistance. Additionally, during winter, you might take flu vaccinations and you obviously want to dispose of vaccinations, any medications that you've used in a sharp spin. A really important point is that your bag must be lockable and not left unattended. And if it's in your car, it must be locked and out of sight in your boot. Uh, just again, extra things now, a notepad, a uh, pen, which is always good if you need to write things down, leave it for someone uh, like the patient who might need to write down a medication that they want to buy over the counter or um, just some information for them really. You might want to carry a tongue depressor to look uh, at the back of someone's throat. You can get them from somewhere like MediSave. You could also carry a machine to test blood sugar. So for instance, if a patient's not responding to you, uh, their blood sugar might be low. You can add in a peak flow meter to your bag, especially if you know the patient has a background of asthma. And this will help assess the severity of their asthma. And of course you want to take your ID card, so if you're on a home visit, the patient knows who you are and where you're coming from. 
So what does my doctor's bag look like? Well, I don't have a bag. I have a suitcase, mini suitcase, which is lovely and compact. I can just pull it along and it's not too heavy for me to carry. So that's everything in my bag. I hope you found the video useful. Please make sure you subscribe, clicking the subscribe button, and please have a look at some of the other videos on the channel.